Welcome to the Inject Creativity Live Show. My name is Rob the Robot from the Adobe Education Team. This is a free online show for primary, secondary and post-secondary educators interested in enhancing digital literacy, communication and creativity in the teaching and learning process. Here are your hosts, Dr. Tim Kitchen and Erin Rayfield. Thanks, Rob. Welcome to the Inject Creativity Live Show, a show aimed at empowering the next generation to be a lifelong digital creators with the help of Adobe tools. Welcome, Erin. Hi, Tim, and a welcome to everyone who's joined us live and those watching on demand via the Adobe for Education YouTube channel or the Australasian Adobe for Education Facebook group for this, the 81st episode of Inject Creativity Live. We are recording this in October of 2022. For those of you who are with us live, we do encourage you to say hi in the chat, share where you're from and add some comments throughout the show. We have the wonderful Tim Cosgrove from Canada in the background monitoring the chat and he will share the most relevant comments as they come in. Let's start this episode with an acknowledgement of country. We respect and honour all Indigenous people from the lands we reach out to during this event. We acknowledge their stories, traditions and living cultures. We acknowledge them as the first educators and the first creatives, and we commit to building a brighter future together. I'm coming to you from Wurundjeri land, or Wurundjeri land, as I think it should be pronounced, in the Kulin Nation, otherwise known as Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. And I'm coming to you from the country of the Jagara, Yugara and Agorapal people from around the area, otherwise known as Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. Let's welcome our techie whiz and Adobe Senior Customer Success Manager, Jerry Wong, to the stage. Hi, Jerry. Oh, I think you're on mute there, Jerry. Oh, we're just not hearing you. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Here coming to you That's from the now. home of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, otherwise as known as Sydney, New South Wales. During this episode, we have the Adobe, we have Adobe Education Leader Emeritus, Juliet Bentley, as a special guest, and Erin will be sharing her presentation on critical and creative thinking with Adobe Express Search. We will have a new, very simple browser-based podcasting app, Beta, to show you. We'll also be sharing a number of Adobe related education resources and professional learning opportunities for you to take back to your schools, universities and other places of learning. We do hope you enjoy this episode. And if you do, please share it with your colleagues and wider education networks via the Adobe for Education YouTube channel. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Well, let's meet our special guest for this episode and welcome back to the show, Julia Bentley. Huzzah. Thank Hello. you for coming back again, again Juliet. Uh, for those who didn't meet you in our last episode, uh, please tell us a bit about your teaching background and what you do these days. Well, I've been teaching, well, I was teaching for 33 years. I started off as a drama sociology sort of major, but I ended up mm -hmm. um, going into the English and religion classroom. And when I met Tim, I got to experience what it was to take tech into an English and an RE class, which is really exciting. So I've had a lot of fun with using what was Adobe Slate, now Adobe Express. And now I'm in corporate world working for Datacom, helping teachers become um, more confident with their use of technology in the classroom, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Julia, what's something interesting about you that not many people would know about? Um, I'm doing a lot of travel now that I wasn't ever expecting. And it's amazing how you go from carrying a big bag to managing to pack everything into little boxes and bags to put into a small but small bag and have enough clothes. Very strange. Not a bad skill. Yes. Yes, a fab fabulous skill to roll everything up and get everything nice without it all being crinkled. It's it's definitely a bit of a life <laughs> skill that you don't know you need until you need it. <laughs> so thank you, Absolutely. Julia. We're looking forward. <laughs> Thanks. We're looking forward to hearing more from you very soon. There's nothing worse than checking in <laughs> luggage when you don't need to. We hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. 
Well, Erin, I do have a very special new beta to share with you. And I'm just going to do this rather mm -hmm. quickly. Let's just jump into it now. At the moment, it's called Shasta, Shasta, S-H-A-S-T-A. You can look up shasta.adobe.com and you can request access. It's not it's it's publicly available but it's a beta it's a publicly available beta so you still need to request access at the moment jerry if you wouldn't mm -hmm. mind if you're already doing that just to make a banner uh, of shastra.adobe.com that would be mm -hmm. fabulous. oh there I'll we go i'll pop it into the comments for those people joining us live there and with Shastra, and for those of you who are interested in podcasting, this is just a, another way of doing it through a browser, which is really cool. What I'm going to do first is I'm just going to click on that new project button. And when you do click on new project, it will open up. It's probably got a few little bugs in it still because it is in beta mode. And what you can do, you can upload recordings that you've already created previously if you wanted to or you can just do the recordings directly through the browser and if you click on this little magic plus add music button you can choose from a range of royalty free music i might just choose high roller and go low energy and if i like it just here get a preview of it this could be a nice start to my podcast so if i like that i'll hit the plus symbol so that bit of music is now loading in to be the start of my podcast and it's gradually loading now and we'll get a visual of it so it's appearing now so it's ready to go and then to do the next part of my podcast i might just start recording so if i hit the record button here hello everyone welcome to my brand new podcast that i'm trying out with shastra.adobe.com and i'll stop recording so i've got my intro music and i've got my first little bit of audio recording and if I want to play it back, I can just hit the play button and it'll play the music and then it'll play mm -hmm. my audio recording. At the moment, it's 16 seconds in, in its entirety. Get a little bit of music. So there's a bit of a gap there, maybe. Oh, it's even got a transcript. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my brand new podcast that I'm trying out with Shastra. Well, it's not perfect yet, but it's getting there. And once I've done my uh, recording, my different elements to it, I can go up to the top right-hand corner where I just click share and I can share this out, uh, invite guests to join me or to add to the podcast. I can oh, uh, fabulous. download so it. So you can directly. work them synchronously with your collaborators using a browser tool. That's really good. Yep. It's amazing, isn't it? So we're not quite sure exactly what's going to happen with this as a product, whether it's going to be a product on its own or it's going to be end up part of another suite of applications that we've got. Mm -hmm. Could end up being part of Adobe Express. Who knows what Adobe's got in mind for this? I certainly don't at the moment. But with Adobe Max just around the corner, although just when you're watching this episode, Adobe Max would have just happened. So maybe we do know now <laughs> from Adobe Max what's going to happen with this app. Uh, but I just thought I'd introduce it to you so you can have a look at it. And like with all of our filters, we're all our beaters. We're looking for ideas on how you could use it and what you think mm -hmm. of it. And uh, hopefully, oh, yeah, so Roland's just pr just pr uh, prompted here. There's also the clean audio output feature in it mm -hmm. as well. It's got some filters that allow you to clean up any bad audio that you've recorded. Haven't got time to show that to you now. But I wanted to just give you a taste of shastra.adobe.com. And um, I can see a request access button when I open that link that you shared, Tim. So I shall have to put it on my to-do list for this week to have a bit of a play. Excellent. I hope you do. And let's hear from Brian. Or oh, what's Roland saying? If you do not have a pro recording setup. Exactly. Yeah. There yeah. Are. Good, good okay. clean sound, even if you don't have a record. Yeah. Yeah, message received I, thank you so much roland adobe audition of course is a much more superior product but not everyone has necessarily <laughs> access to adobe audition if you've Here's got a Brian chromebook Johnson. this is a great option absolutely and Roman thinks it looks amazing. Good on you, Roman. Excellent. Here's Brian. Hello, welcome from Adobe's global education team. And thanks for watching Inject Creativity Live. If you're looking for more inspiration, learning or resources, come join us at the Adobe Education Exchange at edX.adobe.com. Well over 1 million teachers have joined the Adobe Education Exchange to get lesson ideas and professional learning based on making the most of their Adobe applications in the classroom. 
one of the most popular courses on the Adobe Education Exchange is the Creativity for All course, which when completed allows you to join level one of the Adobe Creative Educator program. So far, close to 60,000 teachers have enrolled in the Creativity for All course. If you look up adobe.ly forward slash ACE, you can do the Creativity for All course on the Adobe Education Exchange at any time on demand to get your ACE level one badge. Alternatively, Erin and I run the Be a Creative Educator course almost on a monthly basis to help guide teachers through level one. So look up adobe.ly forward slash creative educator and note that the next opportunity for this course is on October 27 and November 21, starting at 4 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time. Hi everyone, I'm Tanya Averett from the Global Education Team here at Adobe for Education. I'm so excited that you are watching Inject Creativity Live. Please check us out with the Adobe Creative Educator Program and be on the lookout for all the amazing challenges that we have every month. See you soon. Adobe has a new resource that maps Adobe Education Exchange teaching resources to the Australian curriculum called School Project and Lesson Ideas with Adobe. Look up adobe.ly forward slash ac dash projects to make the most of this new resource and share it with your colleagues. Hi, I'm Tacey Trowbridge, head of Adobe's thought leadership and advocacy. Thanks for watching Inject Creativity Live. If you're excited about creativity, take a listen to the Creative Educator Podcast. Well, let's welcome Erin with her presentation on critical and creative thinking with Adobe Express Search. Over to you, Erin. Thanks very much, Tim. And I'll just add my presentation to the stream. There we go. Uh, so I've got this presentation that I created using Adobe Express in my browser as a PDF, just so that you know how the cake is made. I'll be swapping between some uh, tabs as I go. So the clock starts now. So metacognition, um, that's the awareness or analysis of one's own learning or thinking processes. Now, when we're thinking about metacognition, no, thinking about thinking about thinking, this is something that can be incorporated from K through 12 all the way through to any higher learning um, adult migrant English programs um, using tools thoughtfully in a very simple way. Now, my suggestion um, in this instance is in line with the ACARA principles for critical and creative thinking. Now, creative thinking involves students learning to generate and apply new ideas in specific contexts, seeing existing situations in a new way, identifying alternative explanations and seeing or making new links that generate a positive outcome. So my suggestion for this presentation is a way that you can achieve these things within the platform of Adobe Express, specifically the way you use the search in Adobe Express. Now, Adobe Express is like any other search engine. It has tags or keywords that are attached to the assets that are within them, whether it's images or design assets or um, the little icons, logos, shapes that you will find within that platform. Now, as an example here, um, you'll see that I pulled the word spark using thesaurus.com and um, brought up what you will see here, which is the definition um, options for Spark. I popped the link into my um, presentation. So when you look at the word Spark, if you look at it from a vocabulary building exercise, there are lots of other words that are, are associated with the word Spark that might be used within a software or search engine to tag a particular image or asset. The trick when it comes to this is you need to think about how you might search to find what you're looking for, but more deeply than that, as an activity with your learners, I don't want to just want to say students, this is learners all the way through, as I said, to um, adult programs. You want to introduce those learners to the concept that when they're searching for something, they need to think about not just the 
words that they might use to be looking for things, but also words that other people might have tagged things that they want to find with in order to more comprehensively search for what you're after. So say, for instance, if someone is looking for something and they use the keyword spark, but then you also think about, okay, there might be someone who doesn't use the word spark in their vocabulary as often as, say, for instance, fans of formerly known as Adobe Spark, they might use the word glow or they might use the word flare. And even though these words are closely associated, when you enter them into the search within a search engine like Adobe Express, you start to get variable results that come up in that search engine. Now, there's also the definitions that come up when you start looking for things like flare, glow and spit are all different synonyms for the word spark, but they mean vastly different things. So I've just included that comparison there so that you can start to think about how just that slight change in approach can change the results that students see, but how you can then build this as a visual example of how they might have to start thinking about how other people might be thinking about what they're looking for. This isn't just for them to find pictures in Adobe Express. This is a building block for learners to start thinking about how they themselves can search for things on the internet. As um, information becomes ubiquitous online, there's more and more and more information and we need to equip our lifelong learners with the tools to think critically and creatively about what they're looking for so that they can find appropriate information more easily. So here comes the thinking exercise for this particular discussion. Here's an example image that I've pulled out of the Adobe stock that's available through Adobe Express. Now, look at this image. If you needed to find this picture, how would you search for it? Now, I have um, for people who are joining us live, as well as people who join um, who um, might be looking back at the recording later, I have created a little Menti poll where you can have your say and join in on the um, options that you might add if you were popping a search to look for something like this in a search engine. All of the details are in there. So please use your mobile devices or grab that URL to join in the conversation after this recording. But here's some options that I prepared earlier with a quick survey. Now, these are some of the keywords that were come up so that, that were generated based on if I was looking for this kind of image, might, what might I punch in to try to find something similar? So if you're looking at the image, it's, you know, if there's a fuzzy bear, there's a child, they look like they're friends, they're sitting close, they're hugging, they, um, there's might be love or care, they might be together or togetherness, there's cuteness, they're babies, you can see bottoms, you can see a teddy. But then when you actually start to break it down, you think to yourself, okay, well, we in Australia might be looking at the, that picture and go, oh, there's, they're wearing nappies or wearing a nappy. Whereas if you were in the Northern Hemisphere in America, you could look at that and go, well, those are diapers. So those are two different terms, completely separate terms that describe exactly the same thing. And then more deeply than that, using the right or wrong word can greatly change what you find online or what is tagged in um, search databases. So if we were to share, uh, to look for nappies, we might get different search results than if we search for a singular nappy, same for diaper diapers, um, friend versus friends, um, child versus children. The more you build up and the more you extend search terms, the more it will actually exclude results that may only be tagged with the shorter or singular version of that word. So when 
when you're searching for things, whether it's in databases or using a search engine like Google, it's incredibly important for our learners to be acclimated to the idea that what terms they are using will slightly or significantly affect what they see. So another example is uh, Australia versus the US. We have different spellings for different um, words. A great example is colour versus colour with a U-R that we um, use in Australia. If you go into Adobe Express and you search in images and you look for the word um, colour, O-U-R, you will definitely get different results than if you just search for color with just the OR at the end of the word. Now, if you follow the link that's at the bottom of this frame and actually go to the Adobe stock image that I used as an example, these are actually the keywords that were used to um, reference this image. So we've got adorable children childhood encouragement, parenting, sitting, to sit. So you can see who was ever, whoever was adding the keywords um, to this particular image has actually gone through and tried to have a bit of a think about some of the different things that you may um, search for that may be enough of a variant to exclude this image from their search. You can also see things that might not have even occurred to someone who's from a non-marketing background, like the keyword here, copy space, has been included. And if we go back an image, we can actually see in the full version of this image that there is room around the child and the toy to actually place text and advertising um, for multiple purposes around the image. Um, you can also um, see that there's other keywords that wouldn't have even occurred to me like protection um, or oh, what's another one, Asian. I wouldn't have looked at that particular image and had that pop into my brain. And yet the person who indexed this for search included those search words because to them, it would be a natural thing that people would use to find it. So what is the point of this particular exercise? If you are thinking about your own thinking, and then thinking about how others are thinking, for lifelong learners, isn't that a short jump to curiosity and empathy? Which then leads into the uh, ACARA curriculum requirements and general capabilities for critical and creative thinking. When we practice things like curiosity and empathy, we are flexing those muscles and sharing with our lifelong learners abilities that they can use not just to find some pretty pictures to add to a graphic for a school project in Adobe Spark, but also to help them think about the information that they're looking for. And not just that, but also how to contemplate how the contributors that would be adding those, um, sorry, my dog's having a bit of a complaint in the background, the, the contributors who are adding those resources into the databases that they're searching, how they might approach and therefore um, list their information to give our learners an opportunity to be able to find them and critically evaluate them a little bit more easily. Because our goal at the end of the day is to create lifelong learners who think about not just their own contributions, but also think about the things that they are looking at, searching for and taking in a little bit more deeply, critically, and with a deal of curiosity. So if anybody has any questions, I'll have a quick look at the chat, Tim. No I questions, although Roland's uh, talking about the correlation there between what you're talking about there and um, design, design thinking. Design thinking, yes, I can see that. And also Bronwyn says it's good to have an alternative way of understanding literature and using the visual image first will enhance learners' creativity and critical thinking. Roland mm. also points out, is it like learning taxonomy, viewing it as how the user would search um, the internet and look for information. Juliet, 
what's some um, of your thoughts about that? I like the fact that you're making people think about vis their visual literacy, um, understanding tone, because obviously the, the key terms you're going to be looking for are going to have an influence. Um, but more than that, you're showing students, you're showing all learners and teachers how to prepare themselves and future-proof themselves to the workforce, because these are lifelong skills. These are one of the nine, well, some of the nine skills that all people are supposed to be working toward so they can be retrained, relearn all the way through their lives. And um, you've mm. done a great job of that today. Thank you, Erin. Yeah, it's what especially sort of gets me going about thinking about this concept mm. is that 20, 30 years ago when I was in high school, I was doing photography, right, in a dark room, developing actual mm. chemical photographs. There was not a place where I could have taken those photographs uploaded them to the world and then had to have thought about what key search terms I would add to my photos in order to get them a larger audience or order to make mm. them more commercial or to contribute them to a stock photography website to make include that in my income. That simply wasn't something that was even available when I was in high school. And I'd like to think I was in school not all that long ago. So this rapid change of the things that we have to incorporate into what we deliver to our students is um, changing and increasing exponentially. And by introducing little thinking points like this into simple activities like creating a lovely poster, mentioning how different words can affect what they see, starts them on the path to being able to think about what they want to find, but also maybe how they want to frame what they put out into the world. Yeah, I think also the element that you've um, touched on there is also about the fact that we can collaborate, we can share, we can support. We are now creating not consumers, but creators. And by giving our students and all of us as learners the opportunity, we're going to be in a better position for them to take those skills into the workplace, but take them out into life and support one another, um, because that's the whole point, isn't it? We're supposed to be creating, not consuming. And I think when our students see us do that, that's really, really important. Critical thinking is so important and learning dispositions, because the disposition to actually go looking for these words, exploring them, seeing where they take you, that's about a learning disposition. And that's something that we have to really pay attention to with our students now, particularly. Lots of great comments here from I'm Dr. Bron from and Wade Lee Yuen, from Roland in Manila. And thank you very much, Erin. And you managed to get through that whole presentation with all those distractions from your dog and your baby and possibly your husband too at the same <laughs> time. So thank you for doing that. We've got to keep no, it moving was only, through this It episode. was only the dog scratching to get in. It's all good too. <laughs> Excellent. Good. Um, we're going to hear from Claudio here, who's an Adobe evangelist in North America. Hi there, it's Claudio from the Adobe Global EDU team. Thanks for watching Inject Creativity Live. If you haven't already, join the Adobe Creative Educator Program. Adobe Teach Meets are a great opportunity for teachers to spend quality time with an Adobe expert on a particular app and how it can be used to help teaching and learning. At every Teach Meet, there are up to five workshop options for you to choose from, run by either an Adobe Education Leader or a member of the Adobe Education team. Look up and share adobe.ly slash teachmeets to find out more and register your involvement. The next Adobe Teach Meets will be on Wednesday, November 2 and Wednesday, November 30, both starting at 4 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time. Hi, Rebecca Hare here from the ACE course on the Education Exchange. Thank you for watching Inject Creativity Live. If you haven't taken the ACE course yet, definitely go to the Education Exchange and sign up and I'll see you there. If you're on Facebook and you're not already a member of the Australasian Adobe Education Community Facebook group, please join via facebook.com slash groups slash A-U-S-A-E-L. Join us and keep regularly involved with Adobe in Education and the wider community. We have a newsletter called the Adobe in Education Update Australasia, which now has a new look via Adobe APAC edu.com. Please the, complete 
please complete, there we go, the contact form at adobe.ly forward slash contact dash edu dash APAC if you don't already get a reminder about this publication each month and join the email list. Let's hear that familiar music, Jerry, in the background while we bring up Juliet, Tim Cosgrove. Jerry, bring yourself up as well onto the screen so we can do our farewells. Juliet, thank you for being involved in this as our special guest and contributing. Uh, much appreciated. Any closing words from you? No, just keep engaging with what we're doing and keep being curious. Our next Inject Creativity Live event will be recorded on Wednesday the 26th of October at 5pm Australian Eastern Daylight Time with special guest presenters Chris Betcher from Google, Drew Mayhills from All Saints College in Perth and Elwyn Hunt from the Adobe Substance team. Thank you to Aaron. Oh, sorry. Sorry, that's Tim's. <laughs> so thank you to Tim and Jerry <laughs> for putting this show together. And a special thanks to Adobe Education Leader Tim Cosgrove from Canada, who has been monitoring the live online chat. Um, and a very special thank you to those who have joined us live this evening. I think I did read the wrong part there, Aaron. You, sorry. It's okay. Like <laughs> so I'll continue on. You can view past episodes of Inject Creativity Live as well as a new set of 30 minute Adobe for Education mm -hmm. webinars by Dr. Tim Kitchen via the Adobe for Education <laughs> YouTube channel at adobe.ly forward slash ICL playlist. For those watching the recording, see you at the next episode. For those of you who are with us live, join us for an informal fireside chat via adobe.ly slash edu dash meet dash APAC. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you at our next Inject Creativity Live show. Bye for now. Fabulous. Thanks for joining. Bye. Bye. Thank you for watching this episode of Inject Creativity Live. For those who are watching live, join us now via adobe.ly slash edu-meet-apac for an informal, non-recorded fireside chat to meet and interact with our presenters and other audience members. During this informal chat, you will be able to complete the feedback form and apply for a professional development certificate. If you are not watching this live, join us live next time. Use this QR code or link to find out about dates and topics and use this QR code and link to find out about other Adobe in Education professional learning opportunities. On behalf of the Adobe in Education team, keep being creative.